can be a little bit of a pain having to go through and do this. It can be easier just to get live to warp it from the start. For example, if we didn't want to have to get rid of all those boxes, we can just right click on the very start. We can go warp 88.03 BPM from here, which gets rid of all of our warp markers from that point. And then we can just go quantize settings from there, which solves all that little bit of extra work that we were having to do. So again, if we just have a listen to that now, still some things not quite right in there. So we'll just have a bit of a listen. Again, live hasn't quite managed to get it perfect for us. So what we might actually do is just get rid of these warp markers for the moment. Like so. And we'll see what we can do with this. So that one should be about there. Fix these guys up. To save us having to do a three hour tutorial on how to get these guys sorted out, we're only going to do the first few bars of both the drums and the bass. But it will give you a bit of an idea of exactly what's required to be able to get this sort of stuff tidied up. As I said earlier, this recording was very rushed. We didn't have a huge amount of time and we also didn't have a huge amount of equipment in order to be able to get the recording done. So it was a little bit of a challenge and it was also a challenge for the musicians because they had to get stuff pretty perfect in the time that we had available. So considering that we didn't have the best gear and didn't have a whole heap of time it's actually it actually hasn't come out too bad considering and thanks to these handy features in live it is completely possible to completely tidy up all of this recording and make it completely on the beat without it really being that noticeable so we've tidied the first few bars of this up might just go one more bar, give us four bars to play with. And it is handy to get a bit of a practice at doing this because you will start to see different things in the waveform that will make it that little bit easier for you to be able to do the, the manual warping. So I'm just going to trim that clip there, give us our four bars. So we might even just loop that, so have a bit of a listen. And now all we have to do is get our bass to match that. So again, we're just going to go to our first transient, and we're going to get it to set the start of the clip there. We find our four bars. As we can see, you can see with the waveform, even if we turn that up a little bit and make it easier, you can see how it's louder at the start of each bar. So that automatically makes it that little bit easier for us to figure out what's going on. So we'll just make sure that that's all locked in for the moment. And then we'll trim that clip up like so. We're also going to just quickly do this one manually. Again, just a matter of locking all of the transients in to where they should be. In general rule, you can normally see what needs to go where simply because the transient will nearly always be closest to the beat that it's meant to be locked to. And after a while, you will find that you can get pretty quick at doing all this manually too. So I tend to find in about an hour or two, I can get 
probably about 30 channels done. And we'll just fix up that last one as well. So if we then play those together, I'll just bring that bass level back down a little. Have a listen to that. And we can also hear something weird going on with that bass too. So again, we can go for a bit of high quality mode and we might even might even go for it, the tones warp mode. So we'll see how that sounds. The texture doesn't seem to do it. try complex as you can hear that tends to add a little bit of a vocoderish sort of sound that you can just hear in there you can try complex pro again it's got a bit of that formanty sort of vocoderish sound we might stick with tones for the moment And I've just realized exactly what's going on with this bass. A little bit of a mistake. It's done the same thing with the bass as it did with the drums initially. It's put them at the wrong tempo initially. So we'll just uh, bring that tempo back a little. And we might be able to get this to sound just that little bit better. So we'll just quickly warp these other couple of bars. It's important to always double check, as you can see, to make sure that Live has actually picked the correct tempo to start off with. Otherwise, it can make Live that little bit difficult. So, I'll just get this tidied up. That's why sometimes it can be good to see other people make mistakes because it's that way you can learn what mistakes not to make yourself so nearly done let's get these last few locked in fix up the length of that clip and also not got this starting on 1-1 one, one, so we'll just fix that up as well so if we bring the drums back in bring their volume back up a little and play those together hopefully we should have something that sounds the way it should So, as you can see, there's a few different options for warping. There's a few different ways you can do it, whether you do it manually, whether you do it automatically. Although, if you do it automatically, as I've said, you should always double check to make sure that Live's done it properly. Otherwise, you might find that you're going to have to go back and repair stuff, which can make Live just that little bit difficult. So, feel free to grab hold of a bit of audio and have a play see how far you can warp it try out some of the different warp modes and see what sort of stuff you can get happening so as you can see there is a couple of different ways to warp your audio and get it all in time whether you choose to do it one of the two automatic ways or whether you do it manually there is a few different options so grab hold of some audio or even go out and record something might even be a good idea to get something that is a little bit out of time to give you something to play with initially 
and see what sort of stuff you can come up with and see exactly how close you can get everything to the beat without making it sound like it's been manipulated. So hope to see you again in another Ben Ross's Conservatorium of Audio tutorial. Thanks for watching.